So if you guys follow Popular Woodworking Magazine at all or uh, our podcast, Shop Notes Podcast, you've probably heard for the last year or so I've been talking about the Panto Router uh, and how much I've really enjoyed using it. So I figured it was time to kind of show it off in video, get it into the studio, and show you what the Panto Router is all about because I think it's something that you really have to watch run to understand how it works and how you could really use it in your shop. Uh, so this is the Panto Router. The Panto Router is basically a router motor held in a pantograph. And a pantograph, if you're not familiar, is a reduction tool. So what it does is it reduces something to something else. Uh, in this case, it reduces this arm up here and the bit. So if I make a two inch movement with the arm up here, it's actually a one inch movement at the bit. So it's a two to one reduction ratio. Why is this important and why does that mean anything here with this setup? Well, with a router held in a pantograph and a work holding surface like this table on the panto router, you can very quickly and easily move the router bit in a series of controlled shapes. And you control the shapes with templates. Uh, and that's that red template up here that I'm following. And I think as you kind of watch this, you'll see where I'm going with this and how this works. So the Panther router works by guiding the arm here with a bearing, and that bearing follows a template, okay? And in turn, the bit of the router motor is following the shape of this template at a half ratio. So uh, this one in particular is a two and a half inch template, which means that this template is five inches long and it's reduced down to two and a half inches down here. So uh, in this orientation, I would be making a, uh, a slot or a groove that's two and a half inches long, okay? Now the Panto router has two different levers that we control. We control the router movement here back and forth, but we also control the lateral movement into the workpiece. So this is our depth right here uh, on my left hand. So I only have two levers to control. So it uh, makes sense, two levers for two hands. And what this allows me to do is to make plunge cuts into a workpiece and then follow a template to create some form of shape. Now, what shapes can you make with a panther router or where would you use it in your shop? Now, I think the first and foremost and the one that everybody likes to see, uh, at least when I demonstrate this to local guilds and stuff and people locally, is mortise and tenon. I mean, this thing is an absolute mortise and tenon machine. Uh, it does a very, very good job of allowing you to sneak up on a fit using these templates. Now I'm gonna to touch on the templates really quickly. There's a bunch of different templates available for the Panto router. Um, for example, this box here is the slot mortise template. Uh, so when I slide this guy out, we have this molded plastic holder with all these slot mortise templates in there. We have standard mortising templates um, that work both in the vertical or horizontal position. There's uh, one for each. So there's a horizontal template, and then there's a corresponding vertical template that has little registration tabs on the back to fit them the aluminum channel on the template holder. And then we also have other kind of oddball templates. And when I say oddball, I mean that uh, from a shape sense, we have kind of diamond shaped templates for doing like through mortise and tenons with kind of a decorative end on them. So instead of just a rounded tenon, you have this diamond shaped tenon. Uh, or we have something like a bow tie shape, which is kind of a fun shape uh, to make a tenon. But not only do we have these, but we also have segmented mortise and tenon templates. These are for kind of mixing and matching and making your own template sizes. Uh, and I think there's something crazy, like over 150 different combinations you can do with this template. And there's even dovetail templates and box joint templates. Uh, so not only can you do the kind of mortise and tenon in your standard traditional style joinery here, you can also do other traditional joints like a dovetail or box joint on here as well. And with different jigs and fixtures that you can make in your shop, you can even do um, standard rabbits, dados, and grooves on here, uh, acting like a horizontal uh, router table. So we have these templates. What makes the templates so easy to sneak up on a fit? Well, 
First, instead of being a straight wall template, these templates have a little bit of adjustability built into them. For example, when the guide bearing that's guiding the arm and in turn the router is on the inside to create a mortise, it has three steps in it. So the furthest back step with the guide bearing pushed all the way towards the template holder actually creates the tightest mortise possible. Then if you need to adjust it just a hair bigger, which is actually gonna be just a slightly longer, you can pull it out and then it will go just a hair wider. And then if you go to that third and final step, it makes an even wider mortise. Uh, now, thing to remember is even though those steps are small, they're only about a 16th of an inch. When translated down here, it's half that size. Likewise, when we rotate this bit around or the bearing to the outside of the template to create a tenon, this surface out here is actually tapered. So with the bearing all the way pushed back against the template holder, it's following the widest part of the template. What this means is it's gonna create the biggest tenon possible. So you can start there, test your mortise on your tenon, and if the tenon is too fat, we can pull this bearing slightly forward, bringing it down that tapered template, and then we make another cut. Uh, and what that does is slightly reduces the tenon size. Now, of course, controlling the router is only half the battle. The other half is we have to have a way to hold our workpiece consistently uh, and accurately. And to do that, we have this extruded aluminum table on a panto router. This table generally lives in a horizontal position like this. Uh, and then what we do is bring our workpiece up. We would use this uh, sliding fence to position it. And then we have stops here on the front. These stops are for creating our mortise. Uh, that allows us a place to register our workpiece against. There we go. And then these clamps are ratcheting so we can slide them down and hold the workpiece in place. Then to create the tenon, we have kind of the same setup. We use this fence as well, but we need to position the end of the workpiece off the end of the table. That way we don't make aluminum shavings, which would be bad in this instance. Uh, and to do this, we actually have a fairly new uh, release from Panto Router, and that's this, the swing stop. So what this guy is for is to slide into the aluminum table And then that serves as a positive stop for the end of our workpiece. So we can create tenons exactly the same length uh, just by registering them against there before we clamp them in place. And then it's a simple matter of setting the bit depth. Uh, and the bit depth is controlled on this operator side. There's just a pair of sliding stops. So we'd first contact our work surface uh, and then we would set a stop, lock it in place. And now that router can only move an inch into the workpiece. Other thing I want to talk about real quick and something I have talked about uh, vastly on our podcast is the dust collection on this guy. Uh, and I know I overstate it, but it can't be overstated how well that this dust collection actually works on the Panto router. Routers are great at making noise, making joinery, and making a lot of dust. Uh, this dust shroud really takes dust out of the equation. Um, hooked up to a good quality shop vac, this captures, I would say, 99% of the dust uh, out of creating mortises and tenons. And you can batch through a whole bunch of them and you don't have a mess in your shop, which is unbelievable. So the one thing that I had to really uh, wrap my head around when I first started working with the Panther router, but now I found is actually easier in my opinion, is the idea of working off of a center line. So instead of laying out the mortise stop and start locations, instead I just marked the center line now. Uh, and everything is based off the center where the template is held. So uh, I've switched out to an inch and a half template here. And then I just use an extra bearing shank and use that to register this template on center and tighten it down. And now everything is going to reference off of that template that is centered. So get that guy out. 
There we go. And then sliding that bearing in, I'm going to make a slightly wider mortise than the tightest setting. Now the final thing left to do before I cut a mortise and a tenon is to set my thickness of my material. And to do that, there's a built-in thickness gauge here. And this is super simple. After you do your first calibration, this thickness stop is set. So all you have to do is loosen that template holder, put your material you're working with in, and slide the template holder down tight and tighten the handles. And now everything is uh, based on the thickness of your material. Uh, super simple, uh, and it works extremely well. So now I can go ahead and place my stock to make my mortise. So we'll put that piece in there. I'm not terribly worried about where this mortise is going to be just for this demo, but generally I would set the fence as a stop um, or mark my center lines. That way everything's going to line up nicely. And we'll just use this guy as a backstop for that. So now I'm simply going to bring the bit up to where it contacts my stock and I'm going to set the tenon depth. Uh, so on this, I'm going to set it at seven eighths and then I'll cut a three quarter inch mortise. Okay. And then I like to give it a once over real quick. Just make sure it looks like it's going to not give me aluminum shavings and that looks right. So now this is a simple matter of turning the router on, which it's hooked to a dust extractor. So it's going to collect all the chips. And then it's a very gentle uh, pushing in and rocking this back and forth to create the mortise. So there we go. There's the mortise. And as you see, can see, there's no dust anywhere. I mean, it just it, every time I do it, it puts a stupid grin on my face. So now to create a tenon that matches, uh, we have to do a couple things. First, I'm going to set this fence here, and this has a centered scale on it. Uh, so I know that this is a five centimeter wide piece of stock. Um, you could set this as empirical as well. It's a two sided. So right now I just have it set metric. And then I'm going to set this. Usually I'd set the swing stop here to make sure I get consistent tenons, uh, but because I'm only doing one for a demo, I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm simply going to clamp this guy in place. And now I have to set the depth again. So I'll contact my stock and then I will set my depth on here to be quarter of an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch. And now we're going to go on the outside and I'm going to start with that bearing all the way on the backhand side, uh, far against that template holder. That's going to give me the biggest tenon possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting and I'm going to make a couple cuts around removing the majority of the waste. And then eventually my final passes are going to be following that template as close as I can. Uh, just make sure that that bearing stays in contact with the template. Uh, and then I will test my fit. And if I need to adjust it at all, make that tenon slightly smaller, I'll just pull this bearing out a little bit, bringing it down on the template, and that's going to make that tenon just that much smaller. So there we go. Once you have everything dialed in, you can get a really good fit. This is almost a too tight fit in my opinion. Uh, I would want it to be just a hair looser, so I'd actually make one more adjustment so we have room for glue. Because once you spread glue in here, that hydraulic pressure actually may not allow that joint to go uh, together, or the piston action will push the glue through the joint into the surrounding wood. Um, but it's an absolutely fantastic way to batch out a bunch of mortise and tenons really quickly. And just because I use this main thing for mortise and tenons, it can do so much more. I mean, we have an absolute countless range of templates such as this guy, you know, so we have things like this triple template that allows you to uh, do three tenons on the end of construction grade lumber for extra glue surface. Uh, or we have, you know, vertical templates or doweling templates so you can custom make dowels or even do dowel joints on here. Uh, so overall, 
I have absolutely fallen in love with the Panther router. It's a great way to make joinery and really get the most out of a router. Uh, and, you know, once you start talking about the ability to adjust this table to different angles, uh, this one goes up to 90 degrees. This just, it opens up countless possibilities for doing compound angles, joinery on complex parts, round parts, uh, really the sky's the limit and your imagination's the limit. So if you're looking to add a joinery making machine to your shop, take a look at the Panther router. I have absolutely fallen in love with it and I think you will too.